What the f is going on? I like to party. Jesus, honey, wax much? This is Unwaxed. Get in, loser. We're going shopping. With Sophia and Sistine Stallone. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Unwaxed podcast with your favorite sisters, Sophia and Sistine Stallone. You guys, if you're watching this right now, you're probably wondering why Sophia and I are sitting on the same side of the table today. Next to each other. Very strange. I don't know how I feel about I it. I don't like it. We're blocking our camera angles. But the reason we're everywhere. doing it is just a spectacular reason. Back by popular demand, ladies and gentlemen, the listeners of the Unwaxed podcast, we have heard, we listened, we brought back our favorite guest of all time. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Jennifer Flavin Stallone. <laughs> <Woo>! Our mama. <laughs> Mom, thank you so much for coming back on the podcast. I don't think you realize the overwhelming amount of responses mm -hmm. oh, from your last episode. Thank and I, you. No, seriously. Well, you have yeah. great listeners. So. <laughs> She's like, the listeners know the what's listeners good. The listeners know what's best. They're so smart people. They are. They're really smart. So why don't you give them just a little update on your life? What's been happening? How are you feeling? Oh, my gosh. There's so much going on right now because I am redoing our house in Palm Beach. And I'm decorating and... I'm getting ready for Scarlett to go away to college. So I'm really going to be an empty nester. Big life changes. Forever. You know, I read <laughs> somewhere that the three things that stress people out the most in life, one of them being is mm -hmm. moving. Yes. And your kid's going to college. So what is your level of stress? One so it's it's like at a, like a strong nine. A strong, oh, strong, strong nine. A I, nine. I mean, a hard nine. And I, it is a lot of stress. It's a stress. It's emotional stress, physical stress, mental stress. And your dad and I are going to be home alone. So I know. Ooh, that's going to that's going to be that's going to be quiet for the first time in over 20 I mean, you do have three five dogs, years. So you can keep Well, yeah, company. we're just going to probably keep having dogs. That's well, I've never thought of it this way, but now that you're saying it out loud, you and dad haven't been alone really for 25 years. We've right. always the kids have always just been part of your relationship. Right. And that's a huge thing. I mean, it's a big distraction. Right. So it's almost like you have to get to know each other again, which is so, so strange. Are you guys going to go on date nights? What's happening? I, I, you know, we could do a date night. I don't know. I don't know. Um, She's getting all flustered. I, I don't get all <laughs> nervous. I mean, weekend. usually I make you guys go on all my date nights. So, I know. Like, sometimes it's going to be like, very odd to have just him alone. I know. Some, I remember sometimes dad going, I really want to take Jennifer out. I'm like, all right, yeah, you should, dad. And then mom goes, okay, girls, I made a reservation for five. <laughs> I know. I always like, add you. I can't have him alone. Oh, but he loves us. He loves the women. So I thought, you know, the first time we had you on the show, everyone got to really know you on a personal level, got to know your history, your upbringing, and but how I'm you really got. goofy. Well, that's exactly what we want to do today. Okay. Because I feel like the first one was heavy. Mm -hmm. This one, let's just be silly let's girl be talk. Our, like, yes, let's just our other side. So our we decided side. to bring her in to our normal routine, which is we always start with a weekly update mm -hmm. on just crazy things that happened throughout yeah. our week. So you know, bring in some commentary. If you've had anything that happened this past week that's been kind of some notable to share, go ahead. Um, okay, I got kicked off the board of um, my neighborhood. No! <laughs> <laughs> You did. I loved the park you built. What I, happened? I know. I was really a good board member, but they saw that my house was up for sale. And I think they just said, you know, you might be moving and you can't be part of the board anymore. But it was kind of sad because I built a really good relationship with the other board members and I really liked them. So it was a fun yeah. monthly meeting and for years. So so I can't be in charge. And I'm I can't so sad for you. <laughs> be in but charge of the park. And the funniest part is you're probably one of the most proactive board members on there yes. going like, we got to fix the park. We got to fix the trees, the bushes, gotta, and now we got to plant, we got to yeah. mow the lawn, and we have to make sure everything looks pretty in the neighborhood. So, yeah, yeah. I love being a part of that part. Well, so, what went wrong? Yeah. Well, I just think they wanted some new blood, also, that a few of us have our homes for sale. One of our the other board Damn. members, um, she left, she moved out. So, they just kind of said, you know, it was a cutthroat wait, wait, wait. club. A, I have a question. By the way, and it, it's all volunteer, by the way. <laughs> And I work more pretty much for the board than I did at my yeah. own business. Wait, I have so. a question. 
how did they like decide that you were cut out? Did they have a private meeting between no, themselves? No, they had. And go, you know, they had a. Uh, they job. had a vote, and so the neighbors voted. Did and you won. know this was happening? Yeah, but I, the hor- the hor- the horrible <laughs> thing is, is like I voted for everyone. A lot of people that were part of the <gasps> oh, board, no. they voted five. You can put your name down five times and that would have counted as five but I included all the other board members I feel like this is so I only everyone... voted for myself once but no. then I and I liked everybody else so I put their name down and the girls that won kind of heavily you know went out to every neighbor they oh really went to and kick them, you off yeah it's, <gasps> but it's okay Tea, it's, you know mom's hold fine. on this, this is this like is funny the mean girls it is true it's that's so sad and i feel like how you acted in the situation just by voting for everyone <laughs> is how you were in high school just like yes. a little goody too she's always doing wanted, the right thing i always want to you know playing and, fair actually it actually broke my heart because two of the other board members got um, booted as well. Oh, really? And they've been on the board for almost 20 years. So for <gasps> me, it was okay, oh, wow. but I felt so bad for them because mm. they've worked so hard. And so I was almost in tears when I heard they got booted. Oh, the and drama. So, the drama of the, the God. Hard Mom's board. drama <laughs> is something I wish to have right now. Our like, drama is just ridiculous, but Mom's is like... But it was sad, you know? Yeah. I'm sad for you. You Thank were really you. excited about it. But I yes. think it's also a good thing because it does break away from this life here you've built in LA yes. a bit more so I, and, so and I do easier. know I have to pass the baton along and and, right. and it's okay like I'll, I'll trust me I'll survive uh-huh. I want to talk about something that you decided to put on the TV for us the other night I know I'm so late to this game but Netflix put out a movie documentary called My Octopus Teacher <laughs> and <laughs> Let me just paint a AKA picture. AKA my girlfriend. My Octo- girlfriend. The octopus. And I get that this was very popular months ago, but mm-hmm. I'm very behind with all the trends. So we watched it the other night. Yes. And it was a beautiful story. If anyone doesn't know what it's about, it's about a diver in South Africa who visits this little female octopus every single day for an entire year. And what was sort of meant to be a beautiful story between man and octopus was destroyed by Jennifer's commentary and my commentary <laughs> the entire time. For example, um, well, the, the more the documentary sort of progressed, played out. Yeah. played out, the creepier the relationship got between the guy and the octopus. And now yeah. you're thinking, okay, well, how creepy could it be? It's just an octopus right. and a man. But, you know, I, I thought it got a little bit, how would you describe it? A little bit um infatuation with this thing to infatuation a to a to a almost borderline girlfriend boyfriend I mean, relationship. He called it his relationship. Right. Really? He yeah, he described it as the pure magnificence of her and Ooh. all I could do all of the time was just think of her. And that's what he was saying about this octopus. I want to live with her every single day. This sounds like the movie Her with the whole iPhone like it, relationship truly. with like something. I mean, it's I an mean animal, it was but. absolutely st- stunning to see this all unfold i mean this world that we would never you would never think an octopus would become attached to a a human and do you remember (laughs) what you said to me oh no (laughs) do you remember no i don't remember while while i say a lot of stuff (laughs) so as this is going on and i'm like okay when is this guy i'm sorry gonna have sex with this octopus it's gonna happen you said sistine (laughs) if this guy can find a relationship yes, I do. with an octopus, you can find a man. <laughs> That's what you said to me. And I said, you're right. <laughs> well, you're 100% right. Because we sit home every night together, Sistine. And Sophia seems to have, you know, a few friendships she goes out with. Girlfriends. I, but yeah, like, uh, you're always say. going out. And it's always sort of Sistine and I left alone on yes. the couch together, eating popcorn and, you know, drinking and Nora's watching sleep. creepy documentaries. And, exactly. So I thought, wow, this guy actually found a relationship for a year. Why can't my daughter Sistine find one? And I didn't mean it to sound like that, but it did come out like that. Like, and wow. maybe there is some truth to it, Sistine. There's all <laughs> truth to well, it. Well, you know what? There's someone for everyone. Yes, so if there. a guy wants to date an octopus, fine. fine. Maybe I should stop looking for man and start looking for perhaps a car or a tree a or kangaroo or, a or something. Kangaroo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want you under the water. So maybe something, <laughs> something above water. I agree. I agree. Speaking of relationships, Sophia, are you good I'm with struggling. your mic right now? <laughs> I'm just trying to not block you right now. It's okay. You can block me. Okay. Um, I'll do it like right there. Is that better? Yeah. That works. Yeah. All right. I'll go ahead. So speaking of relationships, you came home freaking out the other night. Oh, yeah. Can I 
I don't know if you believe in this stuff, Mom, but so you know how Megan um, Fox and Machine Gun Kelly are together and everyone's like, oh, they're twin, twin flames. flames. Do you know what twin flame means at all? Um, it means they're horoscopes. You told me about this. Yes. Horoscopes oh. uh, are exactly in line. I'm so you proud did of you. Well, you did tell me. That. I know, but I'm so, okay. Good. So, if you don't know what a twin flame means, it just means your sun, your moon, and your rising are all the same. And I don't care if you don't believe in it; it's real. Go check yours because I guarantee it's going to line up exactly with who you are. But I go to my girlfriend's house, and she's having this little get together, and I run into one of my girlfriends that I met in college, and we, for one, show up looking exactly the same: white shoes, same jacket, same shirt. Same hairstyle, everything, same height. And we realize we have the exact same Zodiac. And so she's my twin flame. Mm. And I realized while we were in an hour conversation, everything we said, everything we did was on point. Okay, but do you believe in all that? I just think you're in LA and everybody wears white <laughs> no, pants. It's everybody real. wears crop tops and white pants. <laughs> I agree. And everyone wears a slick back bun with a leather jacket. Okay. Says the girl that likes when I read her horoscopes. Sistine, no, no, I do, do believe in it a little bit, but I, I also think that we do have a dress code in LA. Just like if you go to Florida, everybody's in a summer dress, and here Fair. everybody's in a pair of jeans. But I have never met someone that had exactly the same lineup as I did, and it was kind of freaky because yeah. we did look exactly the same. Like yeah. also brown hair, brown eyes. Yeah, like, it's true. I'm, it was weird. I'm a Leo, and I, I'm very attracted to female Leos. Yeah. Not the male Leos, but the female yeah, Leos. I don't like a male Leo. I like female Leos. Yeah. And I really get along I with I always them. go out with male Leos, but it always just doesn't end up and working And always out. crash and burns, right? But I thought it was pretty funny just because we always talk about, like, we want to find a boyfriend. I'm like, do I just, like, go out with her now? She's my twin flame. Is this my Machine Gun Kelly? Is no. Is this it? <laughs> no. Um, well, no. Just because I know you she's so, not really so well. She's not your type. I, you uh, yeah, you sure, definitely like... <laughs> You she's not a like six, five football player, so <laughs> <laughs> not exactly your Yeah, your exactly, exactly. Well, you know, Sistine and I, I, I don't know if you've heard us say this in the kitchen a lot, but I think we're manifesting something that's probably going to end up being probably the worst for us. In We manifest a lot of things. you got to be more but specific. I have to call Sistine out. So the last episode, right. it was all about us having a toxic girl summer. Mm -hmm. And we were saying that we want drama. Well, I don't know if you've heard us say this in the kitchen. You've, I've, I've heard you guys talk I don't about. know if you feel good about it. I mean, I'm like, what does that mean? Does that mean like getting drunk every night no, and being no, stupid? No, I mean, no. what is toxic girl? Toxic to me is like doing drugs. And no, <laughs> no. Like, Your body isn't toxic. Like you're just doing toxic activities for your brain, like for emotionally toxic. Uh, yes, emotionally toxic. So we're not means going out toxic. with bad boys. Yes, maybe going back and dipping but, into and the ex. And how is that going to help you in any way? It in won't. Life? But that's why it's toxic. I have a question, mom. <laughs> she hates it. So. I hate toxic. Girl Let me summer. ask you a question. Okay, that's Let me ask not going to fly with me. How about this? I'll be more <laughs> join us. Okay. I'll get it. I'll get it. Okay. <laughs> have you ever? <laughs> what is this? Yeah, I don't know. This is toxic. <laughs> She's doing dog ears. Have you ever, when you were in high school, for example, go back to your ex-boyfriend? Uh, never. Oh, oh. Um, um, okay, never. Because oh, I, I met your father when I was almost 20, and I'd only had been broken up with my ex-boyfriend for two weeks. So that wouldn't have... We Gone can't actually very... explain Toxic Girl Summer who's never... She's never had... I've never had a Toxic I Girl Summer. Would, I thought you would probably like this. And I'm going to... I'm gonna prove a point. Mm. You're in love with all of our ex-boyfriends. Yes, even That's more toxic. Wait, 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 wait. Even more so after we. Break I wish up I with could them. invite them over <laughs> all the time. I really do. I think they are the okay, nicest so... guys ever, and I love them. <laughs> That's a toxic mom summer. Yeah, I know. She still texts I, them happy by birthday. The way, yeah. By the way, I'm still upset. You guys broke. <laughs> yeah, she's. Literally... By the way, can I just say this <laughs> to any of our exes listening? Um, Jennifer loved. Loved you guys so much. I, I love them point... like almost like a son. Exactly. And yeah. so when we would ever talk about, you know, maybe we should end the relationship with them, she would beg. Beg us not beg to. Us oh, not I was to. so upset. So upset. So we ended up dragging it out for another three to six months just because you didn't want us to. I'll tell you mom's ideal is having all of our ex-boyfriends in the room doing a puzzle together. Well, that we did. We yeah, used to well, that's what she used to do with all of them. And then we'd Force stay up all night till puzzles. two, three in the well, morning. A, you know what? Now doing the... puzzles. Now that I'm thinking about it, every single time an ex has reached out to me, you can attest to this too. Yeah. The first thing they ask is, how's your mom? Every single Aww. time. And now I'm thinking. See? I love them. 
<laughs> is that the secret to having men like you? It's just act very maternal. Maybe that's what we should be doing. I think you should. Yeah. I think don't be like the boss. I, I mean, see, you that's guys the are, you are the boss. I'm the boss, but I grew into the boss. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. true. I was true. very, very maternal and quiet and really sweet. Yeah. When how I met you your dad. <laughs> and then I became say, How would you say the we are in relationships? Mother. How are you guys? Because you guys are very controlling in a relationship, and I think <laughs> I think you guys are a little bit of the boss. But I think that this should be like you should Wait. give up a little bit of boss position. Controlling how? Controlling, Co- controlling where you want to go, specific. where you want to travel, what you're going to eat that night, what restaurants you're going to go to. Wait, what else do you guys want? Sophia. That's what, not, you, what you're going to do during the day? I don't think it's controlling. I think I just know what I like. Sophia's way more controlling. Oh, you're, you're a bit controlling, Sophia. In what way? I don't care about restaurants. Emotionally. Emotionally, oh, um, you when were... you allow them in, when you allow yes. them out, Ooh, you are that. you are just <laughs> yeah. See, she emotionally. I'm I'm. I'll the, tell them what to do. I all would. The time. I'm like, if they text you, you text them right back. I, I don't do like that. this five minute, or I have to mm. wait five years or five I days to five text. Years. Them. Totally agree. With I think that. that I hate games. I hate games too. Sophia tells me. If you're not playing the game, you're losing the game. And I say, why do we have to? No games. No games at all. She's in no the, games. There. If this you're, is in if Vegas. You're not We're not playing the game. The game. You're losing the game. And if you never acknowledge the game, you're already losing the game as play well. Play the game in Vegas. You don't play it in your real love life. There she is goes, a game. Play blackjack. Play blackjack. No, don't no, no, play no, no, boys. No, no, no. Play There's craps. There's fully a game. You cannot. You cannot. <laughs> Play you know. <laughs> play, play craps on the toilet. <laughs> play what? Craps on a toilet? Craps. Craps? Like shit? No. Shit on a toilet? What craps. is that? What are you talking about? Craps on a toilet? No, what there's is the craps, the game, craps. What? Of all the games. Craps on a toilet. Because that's the funny game. Okay. I don't understand it. <laughs> let's say let's say play Monopoly. Okay. <laughs> By the way, so back to speaking about exes, the oh reason why God. I brought up Toxic Girl Summer and I think we're manifesting is because we've been saying it so frequently every single day that Sistine, in one day, two days ago. I, t- I don't want it genuinely, anymore. Genuinely, four. And when I say exes, you guys, I also mean people that she dated a little bit or Since like long term. It release- wasn't. Of our episode on Literally, Tuesday. This is what happened. I got seven messages from ghost of boyfriends past. Yeah. What? Now Mom's let me tell like, you, it wasn't mad about it. She's so Which happy. one? <laughs> she's smiling. Well, there was no. <laughs> See, I um was actually thrilled about it because that means they still miss me. Oh. <laughs> but I didn't answer them. Oh. Boo. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> okay, mom, I know your daughters are a little bit toxic, a little bit crazy, but we're really not. We're just trying to, you know. Keep it fun. You're trying to live your best life right yeah. now, but you know, exactly. you're trying to keep it fun, but sometimes it's a lot more fun when you're doing something with someone you actually care about. I can totally Going solo, agree. flying solo is not that much fun. By the way, I am so ready for a relationship. Because you've been flying solo, both of you, for a long that. time. Oh, yeah. how long, Mom? How long? <laughs> well, according to my calculations, <laughs> Mom's like, since the last time you spoke, she goes, of my choice. choice. Okay, it was uh, January. She's like, I'm 19. bored of you guys not bringing home a boy. I, for I'm, me to hang I'm out really with. lonely at the house. I need someone to talk to, and I love. Yeah, we need You're, some male energy. Yeah, we need some more male energy. It is, but you know, I actually totally agree with that statement. I think being single is totally overrated if it's a good I relationship too. i do too. I, it's really fun getting to experience something with someone yes. all day like going to i just like it's like yeah. calling somebody in the morning at night checking in with them yeah. making sure they're okay just all those fun I things those. i do it's like important to have your time to be alone if you need to like figure out you guys out who have you been are. alone for a long time okay so we can Thanks. just like, say, say, it say it again. one more time say it louder <laughs> You guys have been alone <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> She's so Rip awesome. headphone users. I know, honestly. No, I was watching this video the other day and it was this guy saying, everyone wants a single girl summer. Everyone wants to be single for the summer. And he goes, but you miss those three text messages in the row and you miss those yeah. goodnight texts and you miss yeah. FaceTime but until three like, in the morning. Summer, you've been, a, you've been gone, you know, without somebody fall, winter, spring too. So it's not like... You're how like, much how, how many more times are you going to say <laughs> yeah, how long she really is making it seem like we're she ancient goes, you guys have been single for three seasons all of the seasons <laughs> but it is kind of honestly it is surprising how long we've been single and not found because I feel like everyone else that's gone out of a relationship all you guys are single even Scarlett which is Scarlett, crazy but she's going to college I, I know she's right. crazy <laughs> well Scarlett's a hard one to lock down for a relationship I feel like <laughs> She she was locked down for a while. She was locked no, down. No, I mean for a while. now. She's, yeah. she's, no, she's harder now. But yeah, she's harder going now. to college. But 
I it is weird that a lot of my girlfriends that used to break up with a guy are all back in new relationships. Yeah. Why is it so hard for us? Well, I'll tell you how. The best way to get in a relationship right now is not go on the dating apps. It's to get introduced through, through mutual friends. friends. Yeah. Now we, this try, might be, we tried that. A couple this might weeks be ago. a crazy idea. But mom, this mm-hmm. isn't for you, Sophia. Huh. How do you feel if I brought in some maybe some blind dates on the show and had Sophia go on three blind dates? <gasps> Wouldn't that be great? I love that because I would definitely be able do to pick the best one. Three right? guys. I, no, no, no. I'll find them for sure. I think that's a terrific idea because right? I would definitely be able to pinpoint the guy that's going to stay home, do puzzles, drink oh, a you're glass gonna of wine be, with she, me. You are going to be here, but you could by all means you're sit coming? in the studio. Oh, I'm going to be in the background. I'm going to have like cards. I love it. Yes, I don't no, know. I, I love that. it. Maybe. <laughs> Let's transition. We asked all of our listeners uh, to submit their questions for you. And oh, so nice. answer however you like. Okay. So the first person wrote in, Mama Jennifer, yes. how do I know he's the one? You know in your gut, in oh. your soul. There's n- nobody can tell you he's the one except you know. You just physically, mentally, every time you see him, your heart flutters. Your, he puts a smile on your face. How did you know dad was the one? I just knew by he was just that perfect man to me. Maybe he's not perfect for everybody. For me, though, every time he came around, I was always got excited. I was always happy to see him. And he was just a lot of fun and made me laugh. And yeah, I you guys had laughing. a lot of fun. We laugh a lot. And I love being super silly. And he's super silly. So it was like we got along really well. I just think you know. You know, you know. There's, you know, sometimes you walk past a person, you're going, Gosh, I wish I could get to know them. Sometimes it's just like that instant, that instant feeling. Do you think it's an instant feeling? Or do you think it's something that also has to be nurtured too? Because I feel like I totally get the same way. I've met guys where I'm like instantly, the first time you yeah, talk love to them, at first sight. you have that connection. But then I've also met guys where it had to take three times for mm-hmm. me to actually notice and go, oh, wait, we really do have a connection. Well, I, I feel like you have to make sure your head is in the right spot when you meet them. Mm. You have to can't oh, be getting big... out of a relationship that's or, you true. know, things like that. I really one. think that you have to well, be ready for a relationship. Well, do you think there's a, a certain window that's when you should start dating after you've gotten out of the last relationship? Kind of. I think it should be, I mean, sometimes so it's not like say it's always true but i really do think if like you're in a relationship for a couple of years you got to give it at least six months to a year before you jump into another i never understand why people the next month will get into I don't, a totally well i just new... i feel like you know sometimes people don't like it to be alone them, and but... it works for them mm-hmm. but i really think you got to find yourself again and really find what why this other relationship didn't work out mm. yeah and then see what you want from the next one that's true and i always forget that you need that time to be in the best place for yourself mentally to find that best mm-hmm. person for you. Ugh, I you. hate when people tell me that. And it's true. I mean, I feel like at this point you are pretty good. Like, I don't know how much more mentally ready I, I think can you're be ready. Yeah, you're I think ready. everything is ready on Gosh. you. Gosh. Head you're to toe ready, ready Sistine. Am you I hear ready? that, guys? I'm ready. <laughs> She's ready. She's ready. Rock and roll. <laughs> Rock and roll. And here we go. Um, okay, the next question is, what are your thoughts on Sophia wanting babies now? See, last episode, Sophia was talking about how intense her baby fever was. Yes. And you know, because she came home and told you about it. So she told me about it for about three or four days. So I do know. I just think uh, babies are not like puppies. You can't just say, okay, here's someone else. Take care of you. It is 24 seven. You really have. I I really think not that you give up your life, but you kind of do give up your life because you're now you've brought this other person into the world and you have to spend every waking moment with them. Um. I thought you'd be happy about this. No, I am happy, but I just know that you're not ready yet to have children. Like, you have so many yeah. other plans going on right now. We're that... also forgetting that you do need a guy in order That's... for this to work. Yeah, you definitely um... need that. Yeah, <laughs> That's got... part of it. I'm going to go through my exes and see which one mom's going to approve mm. of the most. We, we all know. know. We all know. We all know. All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, favorite dish or food to cook? You better say the honest answer. I wrote this one down for a reason. Okay, a favorite dish would be, I love pink sauce pasta. No. The one that you, no 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 be just honest don't say I, be don't honest. say frozen pizza because that is yes. so rude that's the bing, correct bing, answer bing. my mom always says I love to cook cooking a frozen DiGiorno pizza does not count as cooking Jennifer <laughs> yes it does no it doesn't I have to heat it up I have to turn it on the oven I have to wash the pan that's cooking for me <laughs> really? mom mom's like I made dinner last night it's DiGiorno's it's uh, frozen French fries <laughs> and market pre made meatballs no and and rotisserie chicken that someone's already oh yeah I'm already wait by the way chicken I and that. I get the I boil pasta and I put tomato sauce in there so. and it 
most of, I don't know why you're such a bad cook. I'm not going to lie. I'm actually not a bad cook. I actually you cooked actually, my whole life. Mom, Mom, quesadillas don't count as a dinner. Mom, or a just meal. because Mom. anyone can cook doesn't mean they can make food taste well, actually, good. I'm a better baker. Okay, let's just Yeah, that's, that's, that's not cooking. That's, that's baking. All right. You different. are a good baker. I'm yeah. a good baker. I think Sistine's gone better. The problem is your dad never, when I met your dad, he didn't really like food that much yeah, i know jello. that sounds weird he just cared about like tuna salad chickens like all this stuff that really didn't need to be yeah. cooked and so i knew how to make him his oatmeal and his eggs and everything mm -hmm. and so i never really learned to cook because he didn't really care well, he, he didn't had, care if we he ate something he cold the weirdest yeah like if i if i make him eggs mm -hmm. and he lets them sit there for two hours and they're frozen Freezing. frozen cold Thank and you. then he'll eat them after that so for me it's Disgusting. like why bother cooking this is such when a, you don't care somebody that doesn't like to eat or care yeah. about food he Literally. likes eating but not he doesn't really care that about is when he eats. one of the most frustrating things about dad is that we will make him a big breakfast or mm -hmm. cook him a nice dinner and he'll come 30 minutes later and just be like, and like it when it's cold and i yeah. said that's not how we made it and he likes leftovers cold he doesn't want me to heat him up so it's not really fun to cook for him so for the last 30 years i'm like why bother if he doesn't really care you just made really three care. little chefs so it doesn't matter that's right that's you guys like to cook so that's good yeah so this person asked what is your biggest regret and obviously that's a heavy mm, question gosh. it could be something silly it could um, be something very serious god i don't really i know because i don't i mean I that's can't really like a regret. i don't feel like you have a lot of regrets you don't seem like a like maybe no. i mean regret i wish that i don't know i wish maybe that i uh you yeah. stood up for yourself. More. Yeah, I stood up for myself. Mm -hmm. I was a bit stronger as a like a teenager. Mm -hmm. that I didn't. I did. I, I was so bullied when I was push that up. bully back. I wish I pushed the bully back because you know what bullies respond to people who push back. It's true, and yeah. they actually leave you alone. So, but I would always like cower, you know. And I was and can run. We tap from into them. that for a second because I I know you've had this experience. I think we all have where we're getting yelled at by a, a friend or or some yeah. stranger, right? And you let them constantly walk all over you. But I swear, the second you stand up to them and yell at them mm -hmm. back, they become your best friend. Right. Or they, although they respect they you. They respect yeah. you. It's, it's so a, strange. It is really strange. And so I wish that I had that. I mm -hmm. wish that I would, I wish I would have had more strength to push back on the people that weren't nice to me. You do now, though. I remember one story you told me yeah. when I was growing up that there was this one friend of yours that was just rude all, all the, the time. time. And then one day you stopped and you were like, you called her out. I screamed her at shit. her, and I would never scream at and any of my girlfriends. I and I yelled at her, and it was like she actually started smiling after it. She was How like, sick is "She's that? like, wow." She goes, "I, you, you know, you're, test. yeah, you're, 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 <laughs> you're actually stronger than I thought." And she was like, actually impressed so with me. Manipulative. And it's crazy. and we've had a great relationship ever since. This next question might be my favorite. The police ring, saying, "We've just arrested your daughter. Which daughter do you assume they have?" Oh yeah. First I, 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 first Scarlet was the first one that came into my brain. <laughs> I, don't I don't know why. Scarlet. Okay, what do you think we'd get arrested for? Each of um, us. I would say Sophia um walking down the street falling down. How would I get arrested, arrested for falling down the street? Disorderly conduct. I would say Sophia accidentally walks out of Trader Joe's with something that she didn't pay for. But on accident. <laughs> oh no, I, I said no, like you guys are missing the main one. I think I would get arrested for a hit and run or something. For oh gosh, that's horrible. That's no, horrible. No, I would because of a car I'm a horrible driver. Right. I was gonna say for stalking. <laughs> for stalking. Oh, if you're not, there we go. Let's what do it. Let's like the Sistine Oh my gosh. Trespassing. Mm -mm. Yeah. No. She wouldn't trespass. I would I would just say you would um, sneak in somewhere where you're not supposed to sneak That's into. That's Yeah, that is trespassing. Oh, <laughs> God, you guys. <laughs> yeah, mom. <laughs> Wait, well, not not trespassing, but sneaking into a place that you're not allowed to be in. <laughs> Let her finish her thought. I where am I sneaking because into? Because you always don't go through the front door. You always think there's an easier like solution. You're a little sneaky that way. Like you always think that no one, you're invisible mm -hmm. and you can like and to just be invisible and go around like a crowd or go through the back door and you're never always works. looking for, no it never, it never works, works and we always get caught but like yeah. you always think there's another way i feel like because one day there will be another way <laughs> and i'll say i told you i so. feel like this scene's also the person that would get arrested for being in a group of people doing something that they're not supposed to be doing because it's like for the night for stories later yeah. on like cool i don't know if it would be stupid. she'd yeah. be in that crowd yeah she'd, she'd be, be in that be. crowd that they arrest the entire like, crowd. i didn't think of it yeah, exactly. <laughs> it wasn't my idea. I don't know I'm the designated driver. I feel like Scarlett would steal. No, uh, no. 
I think Scarlett would get arrested for maybe maybe staying out past curfew or, yeah. or yeah. something like that. Wait, I thought we we're going to the extreme. That's why I said hit and run. Yeah, you're so, <laughs> yeah you were like, like very like, harsh. I was, I was like, God. Wait, I didn't think the person Sophia. died. Like it could have been just like a clip. Like, <laughs> oh, I got it. Scarlet would probably be for maybe like showing up at an ex's house and like stalking him, burning his clothes. Exactly. Like oh my oh, gosh, God. lighting a fire on exactly. his front porch. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Get Her revenge. Theme song is like good for you. Okay. The next one is, what was the worst date you've ever had? Ooh, Ooh saucy. Oh my God, there was a couple. Um, I had this date, but it wasn't really a date. It was yeah. with this photographer, and I didn't know it was a date. And he wanted to go Always out the with worst me ones. afterwards after the shoot. And and he was driving me back to my house, and he was like, "Okay, we're gonna go out." And I'm like, "Well, no, we're not. Well, I'm gonna take me home." And he was getting so mad that he pulled over. <gasps> on the freeway in the emergency lane and stop the car. And he's like, I'm not going anywhere until you tell me you'll go out with me. <gasps> what? Yeah. And I got so scared, but I'm like, I can't get out of the How car because I'm on a freeway and everyone's going 65 miles an hour whipping by us. And I'm like, if you don't, I go get out of the front seat. I was so upset. I was like, get out of the front seat. I was going to drive. I'm like, I'm driving your car. Like I was Did you? so scared. I was uh, no, finally, I started screaming at him, and he finally listened to me, and he just got back. But I, it was like this is That's the day terrifying. before, like Ubers and a way to call. There was no cell phones. Oh, so you have been stuck. I was stuck in the emergency lane in on a freeway. How old were you? I was probably like eighteen. Oh, oh my, my god, you're god. so young. It, yeah, it was terrifying. It was really terrifying because he had like some really bad like mental illness. That's just take no for an answer, guys. I know. Come no means on. that was a, that was pretty scary for me. No means because I was like, oh my god, is he going to pull out in, in traffic and kill us, it's, or is he? Gonna... It's interesting that a lot of instances like this happen to females at a very young age, like eighteen years old, mm -hmm. and we really have to learn, unfortunately, at a very young age to sort of defend not ourselves. Put ourselves in a position. And, and exactly not put ourselves in, in but dangerous But that's not positions. true though, because sometimes like I had no idea he was gonna turn my No, of like, course so that, not. That but you was always, a case of you just trusting that the person was going to take you right, from but point A to point Because B. of stories like this, you have to always consider the worst case scenario yeah. instead of just thinking it's a harmless photographer photo, shoot, photo yeah. shoot driving me in a car so that sucks i'm sorry I to deal with that thank you oh, um God. what is the best career advice you've ever received because you're a boss lady mm. this person said you know it, it's it's there's no like easy answer to that one there's there's no like okay just do this yeah um everyone that i know that's successful works really hard mm -hmm. i there is no free passes there's no free rides if you want to succeed, you have to work hard. You have to work harder than everyone else. You have to you have to show up early and stay late. I know that sounds really That's boring, what you tell me, and I but always tell people that. Always, and be on time. Yeah. You yeah. know, one of the worst things you can be is not on time. It means you don't care about someone else's time. Mm -hmm. Sure. And um, if, if people that have worked for me and that I have worked for, I'm always on time or ahead, and I always stay late, making sure that they need anything extra. And I'm telling you, early bird, and late bird gets the worm and you will be successful in yeah. whatever you do. Love that. Yeah. Love that advice. I love this Simple, question. Straight to the point. Because you're all about skincare and yeah. health and beauty. And what do you do for self-care that always keeps you glowing? But I also think it's a good question. What do you do in your early 20s that is important that will help you now in your 50s that is better later on? That you've um, seen I like, changes that in I your skin. I think personally that because I know this is going to be like, oh, how boring you are. Um, <laughs> I never got into like drugs or smoking to, you know, I never did any of that stuff. So I think that that really played like it helped my skin. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you know, obviously the same thing using good skincare and like take wearing SPF and all that other stuff helps. But just like caring for yourself and not caring for your body and mm. not like destroying it early on right because things that you do in your age like in your teens and 20s is gonna like really come out in your 50s and 60s mm -hmm. so I like except you should tell the listeners what you used to do as your tanning techniques when you were our age oh my god you well, took first it to all, the next level at, first of all i was a valley girl so we, i would go to the beach and i also worked at um b dyke bathing suits yep her name was b dyke and I love it. And I worked at a bikini shop and next door was Val Surf. So all of us B 
beach girls would get cute bathing suits from the shop and then we'd meet everybody in Malibu and we'd go body surfing. And you put roller skating. Oil oil roller skating and, and I'd put baby oil all over my body. No, you and I wrap tanned. yourself in But at foil. night, you don't know where I worked at night, Sistine. Oh. At night, I worked at Valley Tan. So <laughs> if there wasn't anyone coming in, so I'd lock the door. Bed. I'd hop in the tanning bed for another 20 minutes so to half hour. So wow. good. So that and makes I'd sense. bake even in there. So I'd bake all day at the beach and then yeah. bake all day in the tanning bed. I think it, so I think the biggest thing that you've taught me about skincare is the SPF. Like speaking yeah. of tanning and stuff. Because yeah. when I was younger, this woman made us look like Casper at the Friendly Guys. <laughs> she Thank would God. dump it. And I hated Hated SPF. Well, I knew what I did to my skin. I see yeah. all this age spots yeah. and everything popping up now. But now I see some things happening to my face. I'm like, oh. So aren't you happy? I'm, oh, yeah. Now I'm all about it. And I'm like, I got to start now. Uh, yeah. That's a big thing, too. That Just you've always... take care of yourself when you're young. You have a lot of young listeners. Just try not to abuse yourself. So avoid... Have fun, but not like t- yeah. sun, but not too much. Everything's in a moderation. So no drugs uh, and no sun. <laughs> yeah. N- yeah. You know, I wasn't like totally perfect, but. You know, I wasn't consistently yeah, right. bad. I think like occasionally bad is okay. Totally. Occasional. Mm, Everyone has you know. their vice. Yeah. Um, this wasn't specifically a listener question, but a lot of people asked um to hear this story. And I think it'd be really fun if you shared it on the podcast today because I don't think anyone actually knows the real way that you and dad met. Like how oh, did yeah, you this guys is meet? Funny. Okay, so we actually met through a mutual friend. He was a manager and I wasn't signed with him, but I had done a uh, some sort of uh, sh- shoot with him or something like that that I don't really remember. I think his name was Michael. And um, Shout out Michael. Yeah. There we go. And uh, so we, he called me after, like a few days later after our shoot. And he's like, hey, um, I'm, gonna, I'm going with a friend of mine, Sylvester Stallone, to dinner. And do you want to come with us? Do you want to meet us there? And I'm like, oh, sure. I'll meet you there. So here's the funny thing. I'm this girl from the Valley. I'm living with my mom. I'm mm-hmm. 19 years old. And I'm like, well, I can't meet Sylvester Stallone alone. You know, I got to bring one of my Valley girlfriends course, with me. You can't go alone. So my friend Kirsten gets in my car. And now at the time, I'm driving a Dodge Duster. You guys, I don't think they don't make Dodge <laughs> no, Dusters don't. anymore. And this car was a piece of junk. My bro- oh, I shouldn't say that. My brother gave it to me. I put it this way. I sold it for $250. So can you imagine oh, nice. how nice this car was? It was a steal. It had rusted keys. Nothing worked on it. Like it, I couldn't, it, everything was at zero and empty. So none of the monitors worked on the car. And you had so no I never knew gas how. Cap. You know oh, I, I didn't have a gas cap. I actually stuck a rag in there because I someone stole my gas cap at school. Oh, that's mean. Someone took off all the trim off the car because they were like, your car's a piece of shit and ripped part of the trim was coming off. So they re ripped it all the way Whoa. off. Yeah. And it had a sticker on it that said, another shitty day in paradise. Oh, <laughs> And so so I would drive down the street and I had to get gas every few days because I never knew if I had gas in my car. Yeah. So that was pretty bad. Like I was like, am I on empty? Am I on full? Who well, knows? Just put 10 bucks in the car and it'll keep going. Anyway, <laughs> and it and it took about probably 45 minutes in the morning to to warm up. So I would have to jump out of bed, turn on the car, go back to bed, take a shower, brush my teeth, eat breakfast, and then come out to the car. And finally it would God, this be dodge warm. Is a lot of work this for dodge you. So you duster took this dodge duster to meet and it had like Sly. had this like yeah so i took the dodge <laughs> duster to meet slice so we go to this restaurant right and, and, and style i know trust me i show up and i'm looking good my dodge <laughs> and and i show up and what he's, are you wearing i'm, I'm you in wearing? this okay i had like my sisters and i have two sisters and we didn't have a lot of money so we shared all of our clothes so mm-hmm. we shared underwear to everything <laughs> we just shared everything and so we always our date suit we had this one like little white jacket like very like form-fitting little white jacket and a little white skirt i wore white pumps and blue eyeshadow i love it and this is oh the 80s gosh. this is the late 80s so we always teased our hair and it was super blonde and i like you were super it tan so i looked like kind of a little bit of a rocker girl <laughs> and super tan of course because of valley tan. tan and so i uh we show up my friend kirsten and i and he's with so I was sitting at the table and I guess this guy, Michael, invited all these other girls. So it was, you know, it was like a, so many other women. And he decides so like, I don't, you know. Is this a club? This is a, or no, a it, was restaurant? A, it was a restaurant. restaurant it's closed yeah. down now. So you walk in and you see dad and that guy, Michael, with like six girls on each side. Yeah. From Michael's it was side. like a, but it didn't matter to me because it wasn't yeah. a date or anything. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like, even I'm care. I was here to see So I just met, you know, it was yeah, kind of like it. my first time in Hollywood. I've never been down to Hollywood before. This is literally like the movie Valley Girl. Yeah. Except yeah. you're <laughs> Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> and so, no, I'm not Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage either. was from Hollywood. Oh, that's Hollywood. right. Yeah. That's right. He's from like, Hollywood. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. No, you're not Nicolas <laughs> 
would make me sound cuter. Like, uh, what was it? Jennifer Jason Lee, wasn't she? In there? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. So, no, she was from, was she from Valley? She Wait, was from pause. Fast Times at Mountain High. Someone's phone. Is your phone in here? Oh yeah, because I'm popular. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Sly. Wait, um, put him on. Hi, honey. I'm doing the podcast with. Sophie. You're on. You're on the air. Are you, on? you are on. I'm telling you about our date, Sly. The first time you met mom. I remember, honey. It was the best date ever. It's so, all been downhill since then. Yeah, I was telling how I showed up in a Dodge Duster. <laughs> you did with a gas bag and paint on your car, and I think, yeah. In a curtain. No, I wasn't. I was in that cute white suit. Remember? No, you wore a curtain that you stole from the hotel. That's okay. right. Probably. No, but no, it was my friend Kirsten. And uh, anyways, I was saying how I showed up, and then you said, "Come in the limo," and I was like, "No, I'm gonna." <laughs> we're and you said we're going to a club, and I said, "Okay, but I can't go with you because stranger danger." Oh, <laughs> go, mom! So all the other girls hopped in the car with you, and I followed in my Dodge Duster to oh. a club downtown. There we go. <laughs> no, I was like, I was like Fred Flintstone and I ran. I didn't have like, I just, my girlfriend, There's I no ran. There's no engine. There's no engine at Barney Rifle. Right exactly. No, it, it was wonderful. I, I thought, my God, this, this girl's incredible that she is actually so sweet considering she has a Dodge Duster. Oh, what does that mean? Considering. Considering. Hey, I had wheels. <laughs> hey, yeah. Dad, Dad, Dad. That's funny. What made Mom, out of all the girls that were sitting at that table, the one that stuck out to you the most? Uh, she was like a deer in the headlights. She was like a little elf that was Aww. facing King Kong. She was so vulnerable and sweet and completely out of her element she just seemed so fresh where everyone around me was like a gangster a killer a, <laughs> like a everyone was smart. jaded from hollywood yeah they were mom. really tough girls they asked they me what tough. i did and i go um yeah. i go to college and i work at valley tan and the whole table started laughing at me oh and i was God. like and my girlfriend looks at me she goes what's wrong with working at valley tan i go i have no idea oh, Valley for 19 years and had never ventured over the hill to Hollywood and Sunset Boulevard. But, 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 like, but you have to remember, Sly, I went to 50 states. I went on, in a camper across the country. So I just because I, I haven't been to, I went to every state in the United States and every national monument. I went to every from the Black Hills to okay. Florida. Well, no, you're just reinforcing my point. Right. The fact that you can go to North Dakota, but you can't go to Hollywood. To Hollywood? Yeah. Well, just out of curiosity. No. Good so, I, no, Valley's a very big years. place. We have no reason yep, to come to Valley's Hollywood. Huge. Valley's huge. We have Malibu. We'd go over, you know, Canaan or Malibu Canyon, and we didn't need Hollywood. Sorry. Mm. There's not. <laughs> Your mother was a beach bunny. She just she had pet sharks. <laughs> Everything. You know, we ask you one question, you give us the strangest answer. Strange. Okay, I love lie. you, honey. Um, I'll be home in about 15. That's too long. Aww. Aww. Love you. Bye. Okay, bye. See you. Bye. bye. Okay, we need to finish your version okay. of the story. So my version is you go we, to the get, club. we go to the club. I follow him with all the girls in the limousine, and I'm following with my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And we get to the club, and he's talking. This one girl is talking to him constantly and I think oh that must be his girlfriend so um I follow her to the bathroom and Sly starts talking to me a lot and I felt uncomfortable because she's giving me dirty looks and I'm thinking oh no maybe they're in a relationship yeah, right so I follow her to the bathroom and I'm, I'm just gonna I just ask her I go are you guys seeing each other because if you are I, I'm I'm out of here it's yeah. fine you know I don't care I don't know this yeah. guy I go I'll, I'll leave and she goes good idea <gasps> so wow so I went to the table got my purse and I didn't even say goodbye to him I just was walking you out listen to her yeah, I would have too. I didn't. I, I didn't. Have. Well, first of all, I'm not. I don't feel like getting in the middle of someone's relationship. Yeah. yeah. So for me, I just was like, okay, I'm out of here. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna. I don't know these people. Whatever. And I was leaving, and he came after me. I said, oh, well, I don't want to break up anything between you and your girlfriend. He goes, I just met her tonight. <gasps> so I was like, ooh, she's a naughty girl. Naughty, girl. naughty girl. Naughty girl. Naughty girl. So then we ended up getting a table by ourselves. Oh. 
Aww. Yeah. And the, and the rest, rest is, is history. history. Yeah. History. History. I love that. Yeah, that was our first date. So romantic. I love a lot of um, my But our friends. first real single first date was horseback riding. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, we I both want a guy to see me in a crowd and go, her. Her. By the way, did we not talk <laughs> that, about that on the last podcast? We're in a sea of people. We yeah. lock eyes with someone. But well, you were, you, we, this was in loop with Toxic Girl Summer. Now this is like Healthy Girl Summer is we're at a club or we're at a bar or a restaurant. I like Healthy and, Girl Summer. I know you do, but we also want a little bit of a... I think you've all had enough of that boo-boo-boo. <gasps> the boo-boo-boo. <laughs> the the hell is the boo-boo-boo? <laughs> I don't know. You know, the... <laughs> the oh, God. You know, maybe mom's right. Maybe we should go back to Healthy Girl somewhere. Maybe we'll actually find a boyfriend if we stop saying toxic. I think that you manifest what you want. So you guys yeah. are not manifest toxic. You're going to get toxic. I think I should just date the ghost in our house. He's always there for me. I thought you said it was Late a she. Nights. I thought you said it There's was a two. There's two. Okay. There's two. Oh, speaking of, I'd like to bring this up. My mom is completely against all things ghost conspiracies. She never believes me, even though there was that one time you heard the door slam too, and you and I walked around the entire house with weapons because we thought there was an intruder. Yes, turns out did. to be a ghost. It turned out that there was it was windy outside and there no. was some air draft in the house it was the, winds, the w- door kept Mom, it was sh- the fisherman slamming. ghost you know it and you don't believe in that stuff but i also don't want you guys to be afraid by the way has the ghost ever hurt any of you she just hurt said you. she doesn't want it to be us to be afraid she does believe in it yeah just own it you I have just that want, one listen, story i walk around the house with it pitch black and nothing has like slipped my throat or tripped me or like went boom. Well, yeah, because they can't hurt you. So, but you have a story of when you lived in a certain house and you <sighs> said it was for sure haunted. And I don't know how you couldn't believe it. Well, this was after like this happened to you. Amnuville Horror House. This was like seriously, so it's seriously, true. like people saw demons in the staircase. Seriously, why would you? This buy is this house? I didn't buy it. Your dad was renting it, and then he bought it, and then get sold it back to the guy who he bought it from and then the house eventually burnt to the ground wait okay did you sell it back what? because you were afraid of the spirits i and just ghosts think that there? a lot of weird things kept going on in this house so how can you deny it um uh, yeah did you say the house true. burnt to the ground it burnt to the ground it was n- not when we owned it but when someone else owned it okay, na- na- yeah name us something that happened that was paranormal yeah. okay like so short, what like, okay so what a noticed. crazy thing is first of all the house was filled with rats in the attic so all night long we'd hear rats not that those are ghosts. that's just dirty that's just gross um uh i'm gonna look one time i we were we closed the bathroom doors there was two bathroom doors we closed them both and we woke up in the morning there were thousands of dead flies no windows were open (gasps) nothing was opened thousands of dead flies everywhere in the bathroom okay that was really up then another time a uh, family member was uh, at night and they're in the back staircase and they said they s- saw demons every time. All right. Okay. I just looked this and up. And my sister said she constantly heard rattling of windows and like the alarm would go off in the house when she was staying there. I think the most nuts thing out of everything is by the end of this whole thing, all of these paranormal experiences, the house itself, and no one knew what, how it happened, No, burnt to the ground it burnt to the ground okay I that just was looked like up, hell house yeah literally when you open the door to thousands of dead flies it symbolizes that the devil is watching and evil is upon you oh no it was it, i'm telling so you so you were hanging out at what? the devil's house i know i know this house was truly scary house how do we know she's not possessed who me yeah you Ooh. brought she brought the ghost from no that i house did not know no, yes no. Because you did. totally different ghost totally by different. the way it totally different it's not different because ghosts are brought in through things so it's it's not they don't just wake up in someone's house or wander in say if you bring in an antique cup right right it came with the cup who knows what you carried in from that house well i think your dad is the one who carries in a lot he of antique stuff but we do have like sculptures and stuff that are quite old paintings that are old so maybe yeah. something and something who knows? But you know what? All I can say is the house we are in now, a friendly ghost if there's a ghost. They're nice I mean, ghosts. I don't not, care. I no, actually like them. There's no like... They keep it interesting. Yeah. How do you feel if we saged the house or brought in a, a, a medium? I don't mind that. I think it's kind of fun. 
Wow. Really? I'm actually very surprised by that. Yeah, because I don't think there's no harm to it. I think that if you feel it and you think it, I think if you think it's going to you know help, what? then it will We're help. Do we it. got it on video. We got it on audio. You're agreeing to it. We're going to follow up next week with this. <laughs> yes. Mom, thank you so much for yeah, coming on the show you. today. Thank we you. love you. And I, I, love I, you I know too. the listeners love having you on. And oh. maybe one day we'll just make you permanent. Oh, my permanent God. Host. I would love. <laughs> that will make sure that I'm always with you guys. Aw, we love Aww. you. Love okay, you we'll girls. do it again thank soon. You. Thank you guys for joining us on this week's episode. You guys can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or I'm sure Instagram, think, Instagram, TikTok. all of that on Wax Podcast. And go check out Jennifer's Instagram. She has a lot of cavapoos on it it's Jennifer Flavin Stallone Jennifer Flavin Stallone and you can see photos of us too I think her Instagram is 90% dogs and children so we love it we love it I love it thank <laughs> you guys see you next week bye from all of us here at the show thanks for staying unwaxed no Kelly Clarkson be sure to download new episodes every Tuesday on Apple Podcasts Spotify follow your hosts at Sophia Stallone and at Sistine Stallone and be sure to follow the show at Unwaxed Podcast we'll see you next week